Rooster Teeth Productions Podcast. Nobody doesn't like the new podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Drunk Tank. Wow. <laughs> What'd you think of the theme song, Jeff? Uh, I don't know if I'd call that a song. <laughs> <laughs> it was a theme something. Yeah. I thought it, a lot of talent went into that, I could tell. Good job. Do you, who's that, who did that? Uh, William Sherrill. I don't know what his name is on the website. Lots of people don't include their, User their usernames website. on the website. Well. Uh, anyway, uh, this is Drunk Tank. I'm Gus. I'm Jeff. Yeah, we're doing things a little differently this week. Uh, got a ton of crazy stuff going on at the office, and I can't get everyone together. How crazy is it, Gus? It's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy it's that... <laughs> it's so crazy that we can't get more than two people in the same room at the same time. I know, everyone's we're, like, oh, you can do the podcast by yourself, Gus. I'm, I'm a really boring person. <laughs> You're interesting. Just just vamp. It's, uh, we're, at like, there, we're working on like five videos all at the exact same time right now. It's yeah. pretty nuts. Yeah. So. so as a result, uh, I'm going to try to pull people away from their work for a few minutes at a time and talk to them. You know, shoot the shit. Hang out. We haven't really talked much. You've been so busy. Well, we've both been so busy all day. It's true. I've, I feel like I've barely seen you. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Good, good. How are things good. in the back room? I've been out here all day. Uh, things in the back room are, are progressing nicely, mm. you know? Can't really talk about it too much. I know. That sucks. Yeah. Someday, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, starting to get excited about PAX. Yeah, shit. I can't it's believe it's coming up so soon. Kind of close. I just did uh, our inventory for PAX, all the stuff I'm going to take. For us to sell. That's less than a month away, isn't it? Yeah, dude. It's uh, September 4th through the 6th, I we're, believe. I think we're going to have to end up flying out there on the 3rd to set up our booth because, if I remember right, I think the, the exhibit hall opens at 10 a.m. on Friday this year. I think you're correct, yeah. Normally, Robert doesn't open it till the afternoon on Fridays. Yeah, it usually opens at like noon or 2. Maybe it's 2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for nothing. Thanks a lot, Robert. Thanks for letting us sell more stuff. Jeez. <laughs> So anyway, got that to look forward to. Yeah. You know what else I'm looking forward to that happens next month? What's that? Left 4 Dead DLC. Left 4 Dead DLC, dude, just got announced yesterday. How yeah. exciting is that? Can't wait. I, and I really like, it's given me, like, real hope for the future of Left 4 Dead. Um, I remember when, I don't know if it was Gabe, who exact, whoever, whoever, who actually made, made the announcement when they said Halo, or I got Halo in the brain today, when uh, they said Left 4 Dead 2 was coming out, and they said, and everybody, of course, all the whiners bitched about how Left 4 Dead was only out for a year, and that they were selling the same game twice, and <laughs> I'm going to have so much fun, and I'm going to cry about it. <laughs> but uh, somebody at Valve said, we're going to explain to you why it makes sense down the road, and then you'll understand. And it totally makes sense. Well, I don't know if they've really fully explained everything yet. Well, I mean, you get the impression that they've made it pretty obvious that the new campaign that's going to be the new campaign that's going to be in Left 4 Dead DLC. The, the new DLC. The uh-huh. new DLC. It's a 30-minute campaign, uh-huh. and it takes place from when you take off in the helicopter at the end of No Mercy to when you begin Death Toll. Right. So I never thought of Left 4 Dead as one linear story. I thought of it as like f- four retellings of the same story. Like this is what would happen if these guys were trapped in this Yeah, I always, thought, I always thought of it that way also. Yeah, and so now it's pretty clear that at least... With this one, they're going to tell this. They're going to bridge the gap between No Mercy and Death Toll. We can only assume that there'll be more DLC that'll bridge the gap between the other maps as well. And then you think that the the final DLC will be like bridging the gap between Left 4 Dead One and Left 4 Dead Two? That would be awesome if that's the case. I I don't know if I can hope for that much. What if it took place on a bridge? What <laughs> Bernie asked. What if it took place on a bridge? That's that'd be pretty sweet. That'd be pretty cool. Hey, speaking of uh, Left 4 Dead, that reminds me of something that we saw at Comic Con and actually haven't talked about yet. That uh, zombie apocalypse game. Oh, yeah. Who, uh... <coughs> I believe that was a Konami game. Yeah, I think you're right. A Konami game. And it game. was like a, a combination of Left 4 Dead and Smash TV. Yeah. It was like an overhead view, and you move around with the left stick, and the right stick shoots in whatever direction you push it in. Yeah, it's, a, it's like Smash TV or like Geometry Wars, I guess, the same kind of control no, system. No, it's totally Smash TV. <laughs> it definitely felt like Smash TV, and that was pretty cool. It was it's awesome. Gonna, real, it's going to be a fun little gory. game. Yeah, I think it was, a, it was for the it was arcade or PSN game. Yeah, it is, and you're right. Extremely like gratuitously gory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, one uh, of the one of the levels had like a, a helicopter blade that was like hitting the ground, and you could throw like zombie bait over there, and they'd all run and get chopped up. Yeah, and the zombie bait was a uh, was like a little pink stuffed animal, like a little stuffed teddy bear that said, "I don't remember what it said." It stuff, said like, stuff like "Mama," "I'm, I'm or, so juicy," or stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. And then you can you bait them into like there's also like a turbine you could mm-hmm. bait them into as well. The only Pretty baiting cool. I normally do is masturbating. Uh, totally different. What a coincidence! I'm actually masturbating right now. If I <laughs> wow. seem a little distracted, it's because I'm uh, 
I'm uh, multitasking here. Why, why are you doing that yourself? We have Gavino here. He should be able to help you out with that. <laughs> That's true. I should pull Gavino in here after after I'm done with talking to you. To masturbate you? Yeah. Why not, dude? Pull him in here to pull me off. It's time It's time to fillet, not full hate. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Something like that. You've been playing any games lately? You're back in... Uh... Yeah, I started playing WoW again. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, some friends of mine email while we were at comic-con some friends of mine started up an email thread and they were like hey we should all you know we all play wow it's stupid we don't all play on the same server let's you know all make level one characters and we can all play together and uh, we, i came back from comic-con i saw the email thread and i was like this is a great idea so i you know i wrote you know i saw what they were all playing they had a lot of melee dps and so i figured i should play a ranged dps class and i've done all of them except for hunter so i decided to play a hunter how are you liking hunter so far it's all right i'll get to that in a second <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I rolled up a hunter, and on the server they said, I didn't really see anyone. Like, oh, they must be playing at other times, and really haven't seen anyone. And I'm up to level 18 now, and haven't really seen anyone. So I sent out an email yesterday, like, hey, is anyone still playing this? And they're all like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm level 9, I'm level 10. And I'm like, wow. So I'm, I, I, I passed all of them, so I, I have to stop playing again to try to let them catch up. That's your problem with WoW. That's like every time you and I played WoW together, it was always uh, you like you'd have to stop playing for a month to let Griffin and I catch up. Yeah. I just yeah. don't have the yeah. Like the when time I when I sent like them the did. email, I was like, yeah, I'm level 16. Then the next day I was playing, and one of them logged in. He, he was like, holy shit, you're level 18 already. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean at the early on, the levels just go fast. Yeah, it's you level like, like every 30 minutes at yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's their fault for not having played very much. I think we're going to try to run through uh, Ragefire Chasm tomorrow if, uh, you if know what's, I get a chance. You know what's especially lame about that is I know the friends you're talking about, and it's not like they have lives yeah, they should. or anything outside of WoW. They, They've got nothing but free time to play WoW. They've got yeah. nothing going on in their lives, personally or professionally. <laughs> 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 so hope, hopefully we'll uh, I'll get a chance to play with them on Thursday and we'll run RFC and and uh, get them leveled up a bit. Dude. But playing a hunter is actually really easy. Uh, <laughs> well, everything's easy at level eighteen. Well, I don't know. Like I've been, you know, at those levels you get quests to kill like level twenty elites and you're supposed to find a group. Yeah, I don't need a group. Really? Yeah, I I, I, I have not needed to group for anything. I did when I was level sixteen. There was a level 22 elite that I couldn't kill, uh, but that's the only thing that's killed me so far in the game. And it was really close. I had him down to 200 hit points. Do you think that's because the hunter is an easy class, or just because you've played so much WoW, you just know how to play it efficiently and effectively? Um, I, you know, until you said that, I thought it was because the hunter was an easy class. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be it. The, 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 no amount of knowledge of the game is going to let you... I don't know, dude. I feel like every time you roll a new character, we have this sim- a very similar conversation. <laughs> Where you're like, wow, druids are great. I can kill every, anything five levels above me. I can take out elites, no problem. And I never, I, it's <laughs> never that case for me. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. Well, I don't think so. It's, uh, it's really easy. I don't even have a tanking pet. I have a DPS pet. Really? Yeah, I need to, get, I need to pick up a turtle before we go to RFC <laughs> so I can uh, have my turtle off tank. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, right now, I just have a uh, a cat. I think it's a it was a ghost claw lynx. I think is my my pet right now. Wow, we sound so cool right now. This is the part of the podcast for Finch. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations, buddy. I know you're okay. Well, on the bright side, all the wild talk gone. All right, there you uh, go. I, you know, so since I'm so far ahead of everyone else, uh, of all my friends, last night I started playing Gears of War two again. Oh, how are you liking it? It's good. I'm playing a campaign, you know, like any game before I play the multiplayer, I always try to go through the campaign first. Are you playing it on hardcore? No, I'm playing on whatever normal. the normal uh, yeah. mode is. Yeah, it's interesting that you're playing Gears 2 because, you know, Gav's staying with me, and so we need games that we can play together, uh, and I don't have two copies of most games, so Gears has been like our default game since he's been here, mm-hmm. and I am a fucking addicted to that game, dude. Horde mode is about as much fun as I've ever had playing a video game. Man, and I just play it over and over and over again every night. I know you always talk about it. I can't wait to finish campaign. That way I can play Horde mode. I haven't even finished campaign yet. I'm on act... I'm on chapter f- six of act four, so I'm well, like that, near the end. But that's not how I roll. That's not how you roll. I, uh, I got to the part last night where Dom finally found Maria. Oh, really? Yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's sad. <laughs> For anybody that hasn't played that yet, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but his wife gets kidnapped... And she gets starved and tortured and all fucked up. And then when he finds her, she doesn't recognize him, so he shoots her in the head and kills her. I was hoping you weren't going to give spoilers because I wanted to give the spoiler. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Well, I don't want to give spoilers. 
Uh, but yeah, no, no. It, the horde mode is fantastic. I'm actually, I was actually thinking about giving Annex and Wingman a try tonight. Take a break from horde mode and see what the other multiplayer modes are like. Because I've really never played any of them. I have no idea what any of that means. Well, there's different, different multiplayer modes. There's like Wingman, Annex, King of the Hill, Horde mode, and I think there's probably a few others. Well, I look forward to, to playing them all as soon as I'm done with campaign. Dude, that game has a fucked up achievement. Well, first off, there's the kill 100,000 100, people achievement, right? Mm-hmm. But there's this achievement to get to level 100 in the ranking system. Mm. And so I started looking at what that takes. And I think it's like, it goes pretty fast early on. Like, I'm level 20 now. But... It takes me, it's going to take me like 7,000 experience to get to level 21. And on an average game of horde mode, I get like 200 experience a level. Jesus. So, so how many games, have you figured out how many games you have to play? Well, no, I'm gonna, that's what, another reason why I'm checking out the other multiplayer modes. Because I think I can get more, I, I don't know that horde mode is the best way to, to get experience in that game. It might be the worst way for all I know. So mm-hmm. I'm going to check yeah. out some of the others. I've read good things about Annex. But uh, regardless, I, it takes like, I think, six and a half million points to get to level 100. And I have, at level 20, I have like, I don't jeez, I don't want to say the wrong, I think it's like 30,000 points or something. You're almost there. Yeah, so it's going to take like the, the rest of my life to do it. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Well, that's admirable. You should probably, like you said, look for like a walkthrough or a guide online. I'm sure there's yeah. got to be like a way to boost that. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that. I've looked a little bit already. It doesn't seem that promising. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. I know okay. you got a lot of work going on in the back room. I'm going to get back to work, but and thanks, I'll send somebody else out. Thanks for stopping by. It was great to see you, dude. It was always great to have you. I've missed you terribly. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Ramsey. We'll be right back. All right. All right. Now that we got rid of Jeff, I uh, went ahead and grabbed Govino and brought him in here. How's it going, Govino? Pretty good. How's it going? How was Jeff's one? Jeff's was great. You have a lot to live up to. Yeah? Yeah. I like the flashing light on your headphones. Thanks. See, immediately I start talking about something that, that, <laughs> that people can't see. The, the, the coolest thing about these headphones is how they're gold-plated with what, platinum I'm accents. I'm not seeing any gold or platinum. Play along, dude. They can't see I it. can see sort of green sludge. <laughs> that's, that's way more like it. Yeah. See, the blinking light means I'm in charge. Yeah? I'm running the show here. Do I have a blinking light? No, you do not have right. a blinking light. Hey, let's Could, talk about something important. Nobody so, cares. So you, you've... You've been to the... How, how, how many trips have you made to the U.S. now? How many times have you come over here and hung out with us? Uh, like four. It's the fourth one. Fourth? Fourth. <laughs> Fuck you. Fourth. Wow, that's, uh, that's crazy, man. And how long are you here till? When do you take off? I leave on the 30th of September. Wow, that's crazy. You're so here, I'm here, here for here, like two and a half months. You're here way too long. I know. <laughs> so wh- what are you doing? Like, what's, uh, I know, I know we're, we're all real busy and doing a bunch of unusual stuff today, but you know, I guess for people listening who might not know what you do day to day, what kind of things do you do around the office? Well, the first time I came here, I was intern, right? I just got stuff, helped out where people needed it, and now I'm director of Red vs. Blue. That's like the, the biggest jump I think it up is. the corporate <laughs> ladder ever. <laughs> That's like when you take like four steps at a time. Yeah, you went from getting me coffee to getting everyone in the office coffee. It's right. a lot of responsibility. <laughs> It's so, fun though. So directing. So like, like, what do you do? Do you have to? Uh, I guess you, I basically you b- I receive the script from Bernie. I get everyone's lines recorded, and then I select the audio and bob the heads, cut it together. That's pretty much it. Nice. It's a add, lot of work. Add some sound. It is a lot of work actually. Bernie and Jeff always boast that they can shoot an episode in a day. It takes me a bit longer. It takes me like two or three maybe. Well, they're they're old, and we've had a, a few years of practice at this. Yeah, it's true. Um, so. Do you feel like? Do you ever feel like a time crunch? Because normally we put out the episodes at nine p.m. Central Time. Now, is there ever like? Are you ever like scrambling at the last minute? Trying Not to get yet, stuff? but there is still plenty of weeks to come. That's true. And I'm sure there'll be one where I'm crapping myself to the end. <laughs> how's uh, how's production on next week's episode going? Have you, uh, have you started that yet? Haven't, st- <laughs> haven't even seen the script yet. So yeah, I know we're I'll take a start. Well, I mentioned this with Jeff, but like we have so many things going on in the office right now. It's like everyone's uh, everyone's workflow is a little thrown off at the yeah. moment. So, you're, so you're not nervous, not so you, 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 since you haven't seen the script yet. Uh, I'll probably be working the weekend. Yeah. So, <laughs> nothing to worry about. Have you had to sleep at the office yet? No, it's haunted. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Have you ever seen the ghost? No. Bunny was telling me all about when you're in the back room and you can hear the footsteps in the mm-hmm. front room. But you haven't it's experienced it yourself no, yet. No, f- I'm not. I'm not doing that. Did he tell you that before or after you'd had to come to the office by yourself? <laughs> He told me after, which is probably for the best. <laughs> ben slept here once, though. Did he? Apparently, he slept in that windowsill. Really? Yeah. That windowsill's tiny. I know. He was, he was like looking out the window waiting for Jeff, but he fell asleep. 
the cat's on the windowsill and it looks like the cat doesn't have enough room. <laughs> Man, I, I, I would not sleep here. Have you ever? No, no. Um, I think I might have slept once at the old office in Buda, but I don't think I've ever slept at this office here. And I know before we had the office in Buda, I definitely slept at Bernie's house when we were doing you know, right. Red versus Blue out of his spare bedroom. On your Thursday nights. Yeah. Do you guys mean at night or during office hours? <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt's asking if we mean at night or office hours. Actually, now that you say that, I have slept at all of our offices. <laughs> I, for a while, when we were in Buda, I would take like, I would take a daily nap. Oh, I fell asleep in the sound booth in Buda when you were making episode 100. Oh, that's right. I was that's standing right. up. I forgot about that. I leant against the soft wall. I used to. I did, did when when you came and visited us in Buda, did we we still have that big leather couch? Yeah. I used to sleep on that thing like every day. I would have like nap time. I think Joel was living on that couch when I was yeah, there. Yeah, I think he did for a little. It was while. right before you moved. Yeah, I think one night he was staying there, and. Uh, all the UPSs in the office. I guess there was a power outage and all the UPSs in the office started, the alarm started going off so at the like same beep, time. Beep. He said he didn't get much sleep that night. I don't think he knew how to turn them off. <laughs> also, I was, in a, I was in my first Rooster Teeth short last week. That's not true. You were in Captain Dynamic. Yeah, but that's not really a short though, is it? That's a, more of a, a series thing. It was, it was short though, wasn't it? It was pretty short. There you go. It's a short. But uh, uh, Matt oh, that's wrote right, that yeah, one. You were in the... The mixed messages yeah. skit with Jeff. It's good fun. I thought it was. Uh, I was pretty nervous actually. I was struggling to remember the lines. Well, you look like a professional. Well, thank you very much. It seems like you I look think like uh, your whole life. I think Matt's edit made me look better than I was, to be honest. It did. <laughs> <laughs> he agrees. I guess I, I didn't mention this when we were recording with Jeff earlier, but well, I did mention that we're not recording in our normal area. We're recording out in the conference room instead of the back room, and uh, Matt's in here today trying to work and write. So he's, uh, he's, he's acting as the peanut gallery right now. He doesn't have a microphone, but he can yell at us. <laughs> so Matt came over here to try to find a secluded area to work in, and I promptly brought microphones and an amp and my laptop. and Just started, general loud stuff. Yeah, loud stuff. Started, started talking to everyone over here. Because really, there's nowhere else in the office for me to do this. Every other desk is like filled with... Bathroom, dude. Stuff. I guess I could... <laughs> the bathroom smells like shit, though, because, and, and it's, it's not anyone's fault. It's the cat's fault. Yeah. The bathroom smells terrible Do right now. Do the people now. know about the new office cat? I guess cat? we haven't talked about the office cat yet, no. Um, Bernie brought in, <laughs> like he always does, Bernie brought a pet he doesn't want in his house to the <laughs> office yet again. That's how we had Finch at the Buda office, and now we have Joe, who's like an orange tabby cat, and he was sunning himself. You call it orange, I'd call it a ginger cat. Uh-oh, here comes Matt. Here yeah, hold on. Uh, I'm turning the mic around. Okay, Bernie is always giving me unmitigated grief for bringing stuff from my house to the office. Like what? He just doesn't like anything I bring. Like, the thing I think he complains most about is the coffee maker. And what does the coffee maker produce? Coffee. Coffee that we drink. Bernie brings cats. <laughs> what do the cats produce? Smelly. Poop. Yeah. No one's, no one's enjoying that. <laughs> the coffee, te- a plus. Caffeine, work day. Poop, not so much. He went in here the other day, right? The cat did. Yeah. He did. He went in the, in the conference room. I think right below where you guys are sitting right now. Oh, man. Maybe that was that you? Maybe. I didn't know he had he went in here. I know we the other day when we were shooting the mixed messages short, we had one of the <laughs> lighting bags open, and I know he pissed all in that bag. <laughs> no, he took a big dump right behind that TV. Oh my god, the, the cat has a problem. It's an awesome cat. I love that thing. I want to take <laughs> it back to England and make it British. Oh, we. Uh, I guess we should say the cat's name is Joe. I think I think the cat's name is Joey, but everyone calls it Joe. Or the other way around. His tag says oh uh, whatever. Tag says Joe. Learn yeah, to read. Joe. I had to, I had to uh, you know, we have that closet in the middle of the office, like where our raid is and like all of our centralized storage. And I had to make a sign and put it on the door asking people to keep the door closed. Don't worry, Gus. I'm going to open these quietly. What the fuck are you doing? Those are my chips. <laughs> God damn it, give me my chips. We, uh, <laughs> we ordered hot dogs in today for lunch from a street vendor and, uh, Got a bunch of bags of chips as well. How was your hot dog? It was all right. Uh, the last time we went, we got those jalapeno cheddar dogs. Mm. I like that a lot more. This one was a Chicago-style dog. Yeah, I got like, two Chicagos. I want to get the classic again next yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the classic. It was, it was a little too busy for me. Yeah. Would you like some of my Mountain Dew as well? I have Mountain Dew Code Red. Oh, no, wait, it's empty. Sorry. I want Big Red. You want Big Red? Where's that? Let's, let's go get some Big Red. There's some at the... At the you introduced me to Big Red like three years ago. Here. It's great, isn't it? It's the, it's the best. People outside of Texas... I mean. 
lots of people here hate Big Red. My wife hates Big Red. But what does your wife like? That's a good point. She doesn't like very much. I'm just kidding. That was a stray <laughs> comment. <laughs> but Big Red's awesome. There's no way. There's, people always ask, like, what does it taste like? And I say, you can't describe the taste. It's like... It tastes like red. Well, if you drink a Coke, what does a Coke taste like? It I've, never, like Coke. I've never drunk Coke. Oh, shut up. The only time I've had Coke is with whiskey. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Aren't you too young to be drinking? No. I'm oh, 21, no, you're, not. you're 21 now. God. That's fucking mind-blowing to me. How old were you the first time you came over? Were you 19? Well, I went, I went to New York in uh, 2005, so however long ago that was. So 17? But ha- so. how old were you the first time you came to Austin? 17. Really? Yeah. Wow. We have, we have a problem with uh, importing teenage kids from Europe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a, I think uh, one of these times we're going to be flying you guys over and Chris Hansen's going to show up with you. Why can't we get some teenage girls from Asia? <laughs> yeah. yeah well, <laughs> we're, we're doing this totally wrong. We need, yeah, we need to import some Ukrainian help. <laughs> I wonder if uh, the Hot for, Hot for Words chick has any younger sisters. Man. Um, do you know who Chris, Ka- Chris Hansen is? No. Okay. He does uh, like all these To Catch a Predator specials on TV where he, they set up, they set people, they set pedophiles up. They make pedophiles think they're talking with children on the internet and then they're going to go have sex with them and then they ambush them. Well, oh, the and that's on crew. TV. Yeah. That sounds great. It's awesome. Pedophile. 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 Is that how you say it over yeah, there? Yeah. There's an extra A in there or something. All right. Well, I know you got a bunch of work to do, so I'm not going to keep you too long, Gavino. All right. But uh, thanks for coming over. How was your first podcast experience? Uh, amazing. Amazing? I get, to, like, I get to look into your eyes. I never get to do that usually. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm probably going to cut most of this out anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Gavino. See you later. And now our third and final guest is Mr. Matt Hullum. Hey, what's up? Save the best for last, as usual. <laughs> our... Uh, infrequent guest star of the podcast i like the guest star title you know i think i said before that i'm not gonna be on every podcast but i will be on the best ones and (laughs) why are they the best this guy well you know guest does rhyme with best there you go um i decided to to let matt be on here last because he's been sitting in the same room we've been recording all the podcasts i like like that you said you decided to let me be on here like you were not begging me the entire day (laughs) i I just needed a third person more content every everyone's so busy (laughs) Finally, everyone's kind of busy. It was either you or Joe the cat. And uh, I do want to thank you as well, since I'm as busy as, as everyone else for coming in and ruining my workspace. <laughs> you, um, you, you don't complain about it as much as Bernie does. Oh, I guess that's a, a good thing in my favor. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably. Or else it's I'm just stupid for not piping up when I need to. So, so, so I, I I don't know what you've been doing today, but I assume you're you're working on a script for live action project, live action shorts. I, yeah, I've been working on a lot of scripts because we have a whole lot of travel coming up in the next few weeks. And um, it's, we're going to be in a situation where we're here for one day of the week a lot. So we've got to get some scripts nailed down and be able to come home that one day, shoot, and then leave. And then hopefully Nathan, Brandon, and the rest of the guys can take care of – whoever else is here can take care of uh, – Getting the shorts put together while we're gone. I don't think they can. I don't think they can. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have much faith in that crew. That, that's why they've never been on the podcast. Yeah. Unreliable. And they probably are not listening to the podcast, so we can probably insult them as much as we want to. That's another reason they're not in the podcast. There you go. They, they don't have witty comments the day after it gets posted about what we talked about. <laughs> Assholes. Assholes. What are you going to do? But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of really great stuff coming up uh, on the shorts. And um, some, of, some of it is uh, going to require quite a bit more production. <laughs> well, that's great because we're not going to be here. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be weird because it's going to like some of this stuff is going to be really hard to pull off. And uh, we've been lucky that a lot of our shorts we've been able to shoot in one very long day. You know, just do like one mm-hmm. like, like 16 hour day. Right. And, um, and get it done. But I think some of the stuff we've got coming up, I'm really not sure how we're going to do it. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Have we really had any? You sound like Bernie now talking about challenges. I know this is, a, this is DVD commentary. All of a sudden. <laughs> have you have we had any live action shoots that go beyond one day other than Catch and Captain Dynamic? That's a good question. Um, we've had a few that I think we just did 
pickups for mm-hmm. Spo- you know what spoiler alert was the longest shoot I think spoiler I think that took three days mm-hmm. to shoot yeah. because we had so many different uh, settings mm-hmm. in that one short even though it, it seemed like it was mostly all clustered together there was this montage in the middle where we went to the coffee shop and we went to the little uh, uh, card shop down the street and we did march down the a march. parade mm-hmm. there was we get lucky there was a parade going on and we hopped into that parade was that the tea party parade? yeah it was the, t- yeah. The, the tea depending on what your political affiliation is it was either the tea party per, uh, parade or the tea baggers parade <laughs> <clears throat> I, won't, I won't i won't say which one I uh, I call it, but yeah, it was great. I mean, everything's going right down the street, and we jumped in there, and it was a lot of fun, and um, everyone was really nice to us. And then we did the uh, the coffee shop and those other scenes, and there were several different weird setups in this office. So that one took quite a long time, and then catch as you mentioned took two days because I, I got exhausted from being hit in the face <laughs> with baseballs <laughs> after the first day. I had to, I had to, to lie down. I think I had a concussion. <laughs> Those things were those things weren't that hard. They were real soft, but you, still, you, I mean, I'm, you I'm, can I'm, hit with them. I'm, 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 I was still going to explain that getting hit in the face still looked like it hurt. It hurt. You know, the first there's some great outtakes that I hope we can put out at some point for people on those because when the the first time it was Bernie throwing them, and Bernie is a master prop thrower. I don't know if people know this, but he's he's done prop throwing in other movies. Nathan Zellner and his brother David Zellner made this movie one time that I shot a lot of it for him, and Bernie was brought in to throw eggs mm. at an actress. Well, you it was know, a great scene. Bernie minored in prop throwing he at did. UT. He did, and he got a C, I think, which was his highest grade of any course. <laughs> but he, uh, he, he was the one throwing the, the baseballs, and the, uh, the, ones that, the, the baseballs that actually hit me in the chest, those, those were real, and that hurt like a son of a bitch, and I had some big bruises from that. But the ones that hit me in the face were um, little squishy soft baseballs, as Gus was saying, that my wife had painted not only did she paint them white but she actually painted the little uh the stitching. red red yeah, stitching cool. and and i think rawlings or something on there so they looked really really real and when they're being zinged at you you know from about five feet away they they hurt pretty good too <laughs> and they're like but a couple of them the paint hadn't completely settled or like it didn't um it didn't um you know like bake on right or mm-hmm. something and when Bernie hit me like the first couple times he missed my face and hit me in the neck and if you watch very closely in the video you can see later in the video I've got white paint on my neck oh. from like where the ball hit, hit my neck and skipped off that's going to be in the goof section of IMDB for that short there you go uh, or, was it there also an outtake where there was a near miss where they almost hit your neck there, or? it was my nose it was your nose that's that, right. was, that was I don't know if that was a real baseball that time that was a, like a chest one that mm-hmm. went really off course but I remember that was scary. That was the scariest part of making. That was more scary than getting run over by the car. <laughs> yeah, it looked or, like or it, the knife. It barely, barely it grazed. grazed you, yeah. It grazed like you, I just felt it like the wind go by on the, the hairs on my nose, and it was not, it was not pleasant. Well, at least you didn't have it as bad as uh, Jack Lee did, who got hit in the ear on every take. He did, and he was a he was a trooper. And I like Jack. We I think we've discussed him before in the program, but he played the. Uh, uh, the chairman mm-hmm. in RVB Reconstruction. He's a great actor. And um, I was so happy when he decided he's going to come out and do this. And I had kind of told him that he's going to get hit in the face <laughs> or something, but didn't really <laughs> explain it fully that he was out there and would, like he was far away from his car and couldn't, couldn't <laughs> run away easily. So, but he, man, he was just, he was really tough about it. And like he kept getting hit in the ear by Bernie and. <laughs> Didn't break character one time. Was like he was perfect the whole after, way through. After, I think after the second or third take, he did ask if he could get hit anywhere else besides the ear. <laughs> but Bernie, like Bernie, was trying to hit him anywhere else. But like the, the baseball just kept getting drawn to his, his ear his for some reason. His ear was a magnet for Bernie's, you know, d- directional, you know, forces for some reason. <laughs> Who knows why? Felt terrible for him, but it was but funny. It was funny. And that's all that matters in the end, right? Yeah, comedy. You gotta you gotta do what do what it takes. He's partially deaf now. But I think he'll agree that it was for art. Once he gets the paint thinner in his ear to <laughs> remove go. the white paint, maybe the, the hearing will come back. Exactly. In his left ear. So, Gus, what's been, uh, what's been up with you in the last couple of days? I, I imagine you're talking to everybody about how busy they are, but I think uh, you've you, you got a lot going on yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it, and I know you're in the same 
like conundrum. We all have the same problem where we have yeah. a ton of things going on, and unfortunately, there's a, like we can't talk about ninety percent of them. We can't, and that's really unfortunate. But because, I, damn, we're doing some cool stuff right now. Yeah, but you know, eventually we'll get to, we'll look, be able to look back and talk about it. Yeah, but. Um, well, I guess one of the things I can't talk... One of the unusual things I've, I'm looking into this week is, uh, you know, we back up our website, you know, the database and the site code to the... You know, we back them up every night, and then we back, copy those backups to external hard drives. That right. way, if the building burns down, we can, you know, we have the hard drive here. Well, one of those hard drives went bad, and uh, having to replace it, and so I was stuck with this bad hard drive that has, you know, weeks of SQL database backups and site code backups that I can't get on there and erase... So I hired a service to bring a giant hard drive shredder down to the office on Friday, and we're going to... I can't wait for this. We're going to throw hard drives into a giant shredder. It only costs 15 bucks a hard drive, so I'm finding all the hard drives I can around is that, the office is to that shred. This, is it this Friday coming yeah, up? this Friday. Wow. Okay, so that's being written into the short as, as <laughs> we speak. That sounds great. Yeah. Ho- I, hopefully they'll let us do it. Like, ho- I, I, want, I want to be able to throw a hard drive into it. Chaos and destruction is, you know, the cornerstone of... Good filmmaking. <laughs> Just ask Michael Bay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think we've talked about that before, too. Um, what else? And then beyond that, I guess just trying to get the podcast today. It seems like I've been trying to, get pe- trying to talk to people all day long for just a few minutes, and it's been, it's been interesting. It's been a long day. It's hard for everybody to talk while they're all scarfing down the Chicago dogs we had early, earlier, too. Yeah, those were good. Those were good. Those we, have a, we have a guy that sells Chicago-style hot dogs like on one of those rolling carts down the street which i always find funny whenever you buy food in another city that's like you know the city's food for some reason like seems like if it leaves the city it becomes something else Mm -hmm. somehow like we don't sell like austin enchiladas in (laughs) in chicago but he's selling the chicago style dogs and he's uh just by himself at this cart and he tells you he delivers which i thought was weird did he roll the yeah. cart down here? No, no, no. He, deliver? he left the cart there, I guess. I don't know if he put up like a Be Right Back sign or something, but he, uh, he came down here with all of our food. He's also got like this little mobile credit card scanner, and he's like a one-man He's a one man shop. I bet it's his cell phone that you call. This is like just a perfect scam opportunity to steal a hot dog cart. <laughs> <laughs> is it locked down or anything? I don't know. I, we, we asked him about it when we went out there the first time. How would you get away with a hot dog cart? Very slowly. <laughs> you know, I want to see like if you're like the worst criminal in the world and like could you get on a bus and put it on that front rack that they reserve for bicycles I bet that thing's safe I bet you have to have knowledge of a hot dog cart before you can start wheeling it around I bet there's like there's like you have to drain you the water you should or always read the manual Gus mm-hmm. we know that but I wasn't what was I going to say about that guy oh he's got a website I guess we'll link it in the link dump but we were talking to him I remember now we were talking to him well, the first time we went out there, and he said his original plan was he wanted to just be able to wheel the cart up and down Congress and go wherever he wanted and just sell hot dogs like that, but that the city doesn't give permits for that. that he had what? To, he had to apply for like a permit to sell food, then he had to apply for a second permit to like secure his location on the sidewalk. So that's his spot. The city has deemed it. No one else can sell food there except for him. Wow. So he's uh, got his territory, huh? Yep. He's eighth in Congress. There's a lot of weird rules in the city that I've discovered with food. Like our the coffee shop next door sells sandwiches mm-hmm. with meat mm-hmm. in them. They also sell breakfast tacos. However, they are not allowed to sell breakfast tacos with meat. Of course not. It's like it's it's either a city or a state ordinance. I can't remember which one. I think it was city. It, because there was some weird law that was made like if if the the product, the food product, is made off-site, which they are in this case, and delivered to the restaurant. It can't have meat in it unless the meat is between two slices of bread, vis-a-vis a sandwich. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's that seems that's culturalist. That's the powerful bread lobby at work. I know, right? It's the, like where, what, what, the, the tortilla gets no respect. The, the muscling man. out the tortilla and the pita. I can't believe it. The muscling out the ethnic foods. Man. Which is too bad because those, uh, like those the, meat tacos they had were really good, but they can't sell them anymore. I know. It's like they're the, the teamsters of, uh, of the bread industry have gotten in the works and messed everything up. All right. Anything else you want to talk about, Matt, before we wrap this up? Well, we've talked about food. Talked about food. That's most important. That's, that's my most important No one important else covered thing. that. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm really excited about this hard drive shredder now. I think <laughs> we gotta, we're going to have to post a video of that no matter what. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's some, there's some videos on YouTube, which I've been showing around the office. and 
I was talking about it to, when we went to the coffee shop earlier, I was talking about the video of the shredding hard drives to Ben. And the barista looked at me and she said, is that like computer porn or something? Like, <laughs> would like it, some kind of weird fetish? Would it be wrong to put the cat in a hard drive costume? <laughs> and see what that'd probably be wrong, right? Someone might be confused. It might be like someone's first day on the job shredding hard drives. <laughs> puts why the cat it, in there. Why does this like, hard no. drive have, have a tail? Oh, no. Why is this hard drive pooping in our truck? We would, we would never that to do that to a cat. That's a horrible thing to say. We would do that to our interns, mm-hmm. but not the cat. We'll have Ben test it for safety first. There you go. All right. Thank you, America. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. And everywhere else. Sorry, we'll have a regular podcast next week. Sorry that Matt was here to, su- to hey, make this one suck. Come on. <laughs> All right.